Hey my friends, Yero signing in, and today I wanna to share with you a very special herb to my heart. This is elderberry, and this one is amazing. It's one of those ones that has a lot of history. It's been used all through folklore medicine, all through Northern Europe, and has a great kind of superstition and interesting myth around it. So this is the elder mother, queen of the underworld. We're gonna talk about that, as well as many of the medicinal benefits and ways we can start working with a plant like this in our lives. All right, so join me in learning more about Elderberry. So this is Zambucus nigra, it's the black elder, and this is one of the main types used from Europe, but there are many different varieties of this. In North America, we have two specific varieties that grow really well here and are indigenous to this part of the world. They are the Zambucus canadensis, and this is the blue elder, as well as the Zambucus racemosa, which is the one we have more here on the west coast, and that's the red elder. Now, each one of them is a little different, but mostly they've been used interchangeably as medicine. Although when it comes to the berries, the red elder we don't use because it has more of the anthocyanins in it and it's quite toxic. So we're here connecting with this elder today, which was cultivated and planted on a friend of ours, Amara Farms, which is here in the Comox Valley. And we're just connecting in with it and wanna give her a big thanks for letting us harvest some of these to make them into elderberry syrup. And that's what we're gonna to do today. Connect with this make it into elderberry syrup, and hopefully share with you a bit more about how it can be used as medicine. So before we start harvesting, it's important to give this plant an offering, because this is one of those plants that has a lot of magic to it. In fact, it has so much folklore and rich history in Europe, they specifically, every spring, would give an offering to the plant to help it grow better. And in many other parts of the world, there was an offering for every time we harvest it. So I've brought some seaweed today, and I've got a little bit of the seaweed off our west coast. This is just a bit of a mineral matrix, because we're here at a friend's farm, and we want to just help encourage this plant's growth. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of my seaweed. May you grow and nourish, and may this seaweed help give you more minerals so you can grow strong and tall. Now this plant has a lot of legend and mystery around it, a lot of traditional stories and magic because it was considered to be the gateway to the underworld or the elder mother was the lord of the underworld. It's used and has been used for all kinds of superstition. In fact, some of the older traditions around it really stem from the magical, almost hallucinatory effect of this plant. The idea being you wouldn't want to fall asleep under an elder or it might take your spirit away. You wouldn't want to use elderwood in a baby's crib or it might steal the baby's spirit. Now part of this is really due to the fact that the plant is highly toxic in the bark and in the stems and even in some of the seeds of some of the different species and the leaves. Now they can be used on that poison path of medicine in small doses by those types of people who know what they're doing, but really they're generally avoided. It's just the berries and the flowers we work with. But as we look at this and we dive into that history, we see some really interesting things. An example of some of the superstition around this plant is it's said that Jesus was nailed to an elder cross. And this has kind of been proven based on elder being one of the predominant trees around Jerusalem. It was also said to put little elder crosses on our body, to sew them into our vests, to put them above our mantle and our house, to protect people from witchcraft and evil spirits. Woo now this is just a little bit of that history. There's so much to this kind of magical culture. Even the name Elder is said to come from Halda folk and the Halda folk were the fairy folk. You know, it's, it's said to be Pan's pipes. Zambucus, the Latin name, is, is said to go along with these hollow stems which can be played like pipes and make an eerie kind of mysterious sound. So they're typically associated with the underworld. In fact, a lot of the plants with hollow stems like this one have been considered in old world European mythology to be associated with the dead or the underworld. Now we want to pay really good homage to elder because this is one of those powerful medicinal plants. And even if we don't believe in some of the old world superstition, there's much to be said around this being that gateway to otherworldly powers. And I really believe that there's some truth in all of this as we see that this plant was also used as a panacea for so many different health issues. It's amazing how many things this little berry here has been used for in Northern European folk medicine. Everything from working in the kidneys, to the liver, to helping clean the blood, to supporting the digestive system, to moving out infection and inflammation, to healing the skin, 
so many different ways this plant has been used as medicine. So let's kind of look at some of that and figure out where a lot of that comes from, all right? So first off, these berries are very rich in bioflavonoids and packed full of antioxidants. This in itself makes a big piece of its panacea effect that it's giving a lot of nutrition to the body, right? So it works at a really deep level. There's a lot of rutin, a lot of polyphenols and different types of flavonoids in there. And some of these flavonoids have been used for anti-allergy effects. Some are used for helping support the skin health, tone and elasticity of the tissue, as well as inflammatory effects all through the body. So that's one big aspect of elderberry and how it works. Now the other thing is, is that it's one of those really outward moving herbs. So we see that its herbal actions are all outward moving and pushing out toxins. So it's kind of like a protector of the veils in the body and around the body. So we see it has diaphoretic, which helps you sweat properties. It has diuretic to help you pee properties. It has emetic properties to the bark and the leaves, which will make you vomit. And also very strong laxative properties to push stuff out the other end. So it can work on every end. Plus even when we make a syrup, this has got a great expectorant property to help move stuff out of the lungs. So you see it's pushing out pathogens and toxins. Now beyond that, when we started to study this, because this is one of the most popular herbs in Western herbal medicine, we see that it's got some profound effects on the immune system. And in fact, it's one of the more potent antivirals that we know of. This tiny little berry right here is such a potent antiviral that it's been heavily studied to understand how it actually works and what it does. So because this is in the folklore myth and viruses are one of the hardest things for our body to work with, this berry was put up against all kinds of vaccines to see if it worked better. And in fact, in many studies, the elderberry syrup has proven to be better at getting rid of flu viruses than the vaccine itself. So this has put a bit of controversy out there around, do we take this vaccine? Do we work with the elderberry? But you know me, I'd pick a herb over a vaccine any day. So help your herbalist. But that's up to you to decide how it works is that this berry actually marks the virus so that the virus, which is quite tiny, is hard for the immune system to recognize. And it's almost like a game of paintball. This goes splat marks the virus so the immune system can recognize it and then be able to create antibodies to protect against it so it doesn't insert into the RNA of the cell. It also helps coat the cells to make it harder for the virus to, to get in there. So really there's two different ways that elder works to protect us against virus, but, but none of them are really like your other potent antivirals which go in with the big gun and say, hey, get out of here virus. This is more like one of those sort of Jedi mind tricks and it kind of tells the immune system, hey yo, there's something happening over here and it tells the cell, don't let that thing in and protects it that way. So the virus all of a sudden gets busted and away it goes. Hmm. Thank you little elderberry. Elderberry syrup as an immune support is one of my favorite medicines and so I want to share with you how to make that. It can be made with the blue or the black ones and really we want to get them when they're this fresh and this ripe and just juicy. They're just perfect. So when harvesting elderberry, it has this interesting little spot where it snaps off the main stem really easily. So rather than yanking on it like this, we just give it a little snap and when it's ready, it'll come off like this. Now we don't really want the stems because some of those more toxic compounds are in there. So what we do is we work with a fork like this. We just take them and run our fork through all the stems, and this is part of the garbling. So we get rid of these stems and just run our fork through. Really simply, this is probably the most efficient way to work with berries. Now, it's okay if you get a few of these little stems in there. Don't be too anal, just, just know that you don't want that many stems. Often elderberry matures at different times, so it's important to make sure we just get the really, really ripe ones. And you can see, in fact, I see a couple of little earwigs in there. They're trying to harvest these elderberries before we do. So obviously we're gonna be picking those not these green ones. Once again, really simple. You can just fork them off into our basket. So once we got the berries like this, we then want to either dry them out or start to work with them as medicine and make them into a syrup or a tincture. I prefer to make syrup with these because it's just one of the tastiest ways to get that immune support into the body. And so there's many different ways we can make syrup. And I'll give you just a couple of quick ideas. So first off, a simple syrup is two parts honey, one part water. This is your traditional simple syrup. It's not my favorite because it's too sweet. So that's one way you can make them is you can cook them down 
and then add two parts of honey and keep cooking them down. This denatures the honey to a degree, but the honey pulls out some of the active compounds and you get a great syrup that's a little sweet for my liking, but a lot of people like to work with it that way. The other way you can make a syrup, and this is my kind of more favorite, is to take the berries and do a tea, again, a decoction this is, and cook them down and then do two parts of that tea to one part honey instead of one part of the tea to two parts honey. So do two parts of the tea to one part honey and then to cure it and make sure it doesn't go bad because it will ferment and turn into mead pretty quick, you add one more part of alcohol. So typically I'll go two parts of a decoction, one part honey and one part of brandy. The reason I like brandy is it opens up the lungs and helps penetrate deeper. And that's where we really want our elder syrup medicine to work as an immune support and an antiviral, but also to really have an expectorant quality that's healing to the mucous membranes of the lungs and work in giving all those rich flavonoids to that part of the body. So this is my favorite medicine to work with with this plant. It's really simple. When you're making your decoction or tea, you want to cook it down for a couple of hours. And usually I'll start with about six to seven parts water to one part of elderberry. And I'll bring that all the way down to around one part to one or two parts to one. So we're gonna reduce the volume down to make as strong as we can. Now there's many methods of doing this, but essentially make the strongest decoction you can. Add in one part honey to your two parts tea and one part alcohol. And you've got a delicious elderberry syrup that's gonna last for a long time. After you do all that, you filter it out, put it in bottles and yum. This is what we do at Harmonic Arts. This is one of my favorites and it just tastes delicious. Now, if you've made syrups before, I highly recommend with elder, you add in some things like ginger or you might add in a couple other herbs and make a little deeper immune syrup. If you want, it's fun to play with. I've been experimenting with them. My favorite is definitely elder and ginger. All right, I hope you get out and make some of this syrup. It's delicious, easy to do, and just really fun. I'd also say that it's just as easy to make it with dried elderberry. So you don't have to have an elderberry bush, but it is a really amazing, powerful medicine that you can start working with for your family in the winter months. I just love how this plant shows up. You can see it kind of looks like lungs almost in that way. And it's interesting how it has such an affinity for that part of the body, but it also has an affinity for the capillary beds. And this sort of looks like all the different capillary beds of the body working with blood, right? It's been known to be supportive for heart health and you can see how this is almost like circulation and all those antioxidant, anti-inflammatory compounds are really part of that and how it works. But it's also been used for these other really dense tissues like the kidneys and the liver. And what I love most about this plant is that it tastes really, really good. It's one of the best tasting medicine berries I know of. And with that, Part of that effect is how it helps to support and stabilize the blood sugars. In fact, elderberries started to be used for a bit of that blood sugar stability, diabetes type conditions. And in the modern world where we all have a lot of ups and downs, I think elderberry might be one of those great herbs to really support our body in moving out what no longer serves us. So whether you believe in the folklore or the mystery behind the underworld and the queen of the elder or eldermore or any of this rich history around this plant and its panacea effect, we can all rely on the fact that this is a great immune herb that has a lot of benefits for the body that's rich in phytochemistry and has really shown up in a way to support people in dealing with many different types of health issues. So I hope you get out and connect with this. And elderberry is just an amazing herb. There's, there's only so much time we have to share in this video, but really this is one of the best plants in our part of the world. It's easy to grow. This is only a couple years old. I've seen these get to be a good 20 feet tall, but really this is a great one for you to start working with either growing it on your farm or on your land or in your yard or just connecting with it in the natural world, buying it in a health food store, whatever way you want to work with it. I will suggest though that with elderberry, if you plant it in your garden, it's known to work like an elder teacher to help support and teach the other plants how to show up in a more healthy way. That's what they say. Big love to Elder, to you. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope you got a little bit out of it. And let me know in the comments below, share what you know about Elder. Cause I know you, you're all herb nerds. You know a bit more about this plant than you're letting on. So share with me your experience with Elderberry and let our community grow a little more herbal knowledge. Ciao for now. We'll see you soon friends. Peru.